tonight, I wanted to talk about uh, with rewards, recognition, and praise also comes loss, disregard, and criticism. Each of us strives for accomplishment, for recognition, for praise. This is what human beings do. <clears throat> we want to be the best. We want to be celebrated. We want to hear the applause of the crowd. We want to establish a legacy. This is why we work hard, why we strive, why we push ourselves. In old Roman days, it's why generals took armies out to distant lands to win great victories and earn themselves a triumph through the streets of Rome. Today, it's why we do our own version of these events like Super Bowls, World Series, Academy Awards, or even Nobel Prizes. They're all the pinnacle of success in their individual areas of accomplishment. But where does this recognition and attention get us? What does it mean? Brad Pitt, one of the most famous actors of our generation, once told the story about the early days of his career. He had just gotten his first bit of real publicity, a very positive review in a major newspaper, USA Today. And he said, I was pretty pleased with myself. Two days after it came out, I went over to a friend of a friend's house. In the kitchen, I looked down, and there's a litter box for the cat. And there's my piece in USA Today, the big cat poop on top of it. I laughed and realized, well, that pretty much defines it for me. Famed for his stoicism, Marcus Aurelius, in his works called The Meditations, reminds himself of what applause really is, just a bunch of idiots slapping their hands together. He states, what is cheering and praise, but just the clacking of tongues? And what happened to Alexander the Great, the most famous and accomplished man in the world? In the end, he was buried in the same ground as an ordinary mule driver. So should we then strive on honing our craft and deeds to let go of expectations of perfection and reward? The short answer is yes, if you want to be a happier person. Author and psychologist of Zen practitioner, Dr. Mark Epstein discusses this deeper in his book, The Zen of Therapy. He remarks, visualizing success, the letting go of the outcome is a common problem for Westerners grappling with Buddhist thoughts and mindful practices in general. The idea of internally visualizing the success of an action, like a golfer before a swing, for example, is well entrenched in Western thought. Mindfulness, conversely, emphasizes the concept of letting go of the outcome. That is, performing the action with no emotional investment regarding the results. So where the exact middle path or balance point exists is different for each person. We're individuals, after all, and as such, there is no one-size-fits-all. As I'm finding with my child who suffers from depression and anxiety, the intersecting approaches of psychotherapy and the Buddhist thought process hold many possibilities for helping individuals find their own balance point and experience less suffering. So then is the ability to be the master of oneself something one can study? I'm glad you asked. And for me and for many others, that starting point is called Zen. But don't see me as a single faceted individual. There are many methods that offer the capability of developing a more fluid ego state. Meditation, mindfulness practice, dialectic and cognitive behavioral therapy, psychotherapy, and various others are really roads leading all to the same place. Contentment with oneself without relying on outside forces. Often, Combining these different vehicles can be useful in the realization of your goals. One of the common values across the method, or these methods rather, is having the ability to examine the perceived mental and emotional challenges within ourselves. By truly looking in the mirror of our own ego, we can begin to recognize, forgive, and change the behaviors that have led us to our current point of suffering. The word Sanskrit for dukkha is often translated as pain or suffering. 
but I have read that a closer translation would be difficult to face. And in his book, Dr. Eckstein also shares that. We cannot escape that which is difficult to face. Old age, illness, death, misfortune. But by practicing kindness towards the part of you that is suffering, you can face these inevitabilities without giving up on the experience of the now in the process. The point of this discussion was not to render everything, every action that we do is meaningless. It's just a reminder for us to never get too full of ourselves or to live only for the applause in life. A reminder to not succumb to attachments and aversions that yoke us to samsara, the cycle of suffering. Don't think that fame or rewards change anything. Tune it out. Because if you live by the sword of fleeting moments, then you'll perish by them as well. Therefore, find a vehicle that works for you. Stay awake. Practice regularly. Hit the clear button often on your Zen calculator. All you can ever do is your best in each moment. If people appreciate that, great. If they don't, well, you know what opinions and recognition are worth. Cat dung on a newspaper, in a letterbox, in a kitchen. Yours in the Dhamma. Peace on.